All right, and I'll do these on the calculator also. Um, I'm going to work them by hand and graph them. Then I'll show you how I'll do these on the calculator. So y'all, this first one has graph the equation by plotting points. So this is 8y plus 4x equals 4. So the thing we want to do, whether you're solving this by hand or on the calculator, you want to solve this first one for the y. So we're going to solve for the y. So your first move is to move the x's to the other side by adding the opposite. I'm going to add a negative 4x to both sides. So the 8y is coming down. You mean subtract the 4x, not add? Yeah, and it's opposite, but yeah, subtract 4x on this one. All right, the x's cancel on the left side. Now, remember, 4 and the negative 4x, they're not like terms. So I'm just going to write them as 4 minus my 4x. Order does not matter. If you want the x's first, you can put the negative 4x and then plus 4. All right, now you had to come in and divide everybody by 8. And the only thing now, reduce everything and simplify fractions. So the 8 divided by 8 makes that a 1y like we want. 4 divided by 8 won't divide, but we can reduce that fraction down to a 1 half by taking out the 4 from both of those. And then I got another 4 over 8, which is going to give me a 1 half, and then my x. So by hand, we're going to figure out two points so that we can plot them on our graph. Now, in math lab, it'll let you move the half marks on this when you're moving the cursor, okay? Although it's showing 1, 2, 3, 4, it will let you move on the half marks in between those. All right, so I'm going to put a zero in for my X. So if we put a zero in for X, one half times zero is zero. And then we have one half minus zero would give us a one half for that Y value. So zero, one half, I would go up in between zero and one on the y-axis for my first point. All right, then I'll probably just use a one for my second one because one half times one is one half. One half minus one half would give me a zero for the y value. So my second point would be right one and zero. So at that point, we can tell my line is going to sort of go downhill from the left to the right. All right, y'all, let me let one in real quick. Let's see. Let's see. All righty. Let me do this on the calculator. Now, in the calculator, you have to have it solved for your Y, okay? So I'm going to go to my calculator now. All right, also on the calculator, we go to y equals. Put in our one half. Now remember, if you want it to look like a fraction when you're putting it in here, hit the green alpha button and the y equals, and then hit enter on ND, and that'll let you put a fraction. So I can put my one half in as a fraction like it looks. Okay, that was what, a two on the bottom? I was letting someone in real quick. All right, then arrow out of that. And then we had minus one half X. So I'm going to hit my minus. I'm going to get the fraction again by hitting alpha Y equals and enter. Then I'll put my one on top. Arrow down, put my two on the bottom. And then arrow right and put my X. So now it looks exactly like it looks on my paper. So y'all, we're going to hit graph to make sure this is going downhill like our line was, and there it goes. And then if you wanted to find points on here, you would hit second graph. 
in that list all the points. So there's my zero, one half I use, and then my one zero. If you don't want to use fractions when you're graphing it, I would use one zero, and then I would come down here and probably use three, negative one. So you can find points when you graph it that are not decimal or fractions, okay? All right, y'all, so going back to the next problem. All right, so this one says graph y equals x squared plus two. So this one's already solved. Now I didn't say, but on the first one here in math lab, you're gonna use the two point line tool. This one since it's the x squared in math lab, you'll use the three point x squared tool, okay? Now, every time I've done this one, I always use negative one, zero, and positive one. Now, since this is the parabola shape tool, whenever you get it negative one, you'll get the same value for positive one. If you use negative two, you'd get the same value at positive two. Because remember, these graphs are what we call symmetric. All right, so let's put a negative one in there. Negative one squared is a positive one. One plus two gives us three. Put a zero in for the X. Zero squared is zero. Zero plus two gives us two. And then when we put a one in for the X, one squared is one. One plus two is three. And y'all, I'll tell you the biggest mistake I get on this one when y'all are punching this on the calculator, with that negative one, you gotta put that negative one in parentheses on the calculator or it gives you the wrong answer, okay? So always make sure that the negative numbers and the positive numbers that are the same have the same Y value. All right, y'all, so let me go over here. I would plot my negative one, three. So come left one and up three. I got zero, two. So starting at zero, I would go up two. And then I have one three, so go right one and up three. Now in math lab, once you put that third point, it's going to draw you a U-shaped graph coming up. All right, now that was not bad on the calculator, so let me hit that on the calculator. So all the ones I'm graphing, I'm gonna show you on this calculator. So I'm gonna to go to my y equals, clear out that equation. And y'all wanna clear the left side over here so that it's all new problem here. All right, so we would put in our x squared plus two. I'm gonna hit my x. I'm gonna square it with the squaring and then add two. Oh, hang on, I got something. It looks like it squared it twice, so let me delete that one. All right, so now I got x squared plus two. So when we graph that, there's our parabola we just drew. And then remember, if you didn't want to make your own table up, you hit second graph, and then that'll pull the numbers up. Now watch when I go to the negative numbers, you can start seeing that negative one and one are both three, negative two and two are both six, and so on. So any three points, put on that graph and it will draw it for you. All right, y'all, so I'm gonna move this paper up so we can see this third one here. So this is the picky graph of all of these. And it's really picky. Remember, that's absolute value. So absolute value, you have to have two of these points when you graph it in MATLAB. And y'all, that V point has to be the first point we plot. All right. 
So this first point you plot on this graph has to have the y value of zero. And the way you're going to get a zero y value on that, the first x, when you put it into that absolute value, has to make this equal zero inside those absolute values. So let me ask y'all, what's my first x going to be? Negative five. Negative five. So y'all, they might go x minus five, x plus six, x minus six, whatever they give you in there, make sure the first x makes that equal zero. Because watch this, negative five plus five is zero, absolute value of zero, gives me a y value of zero. Now, my second point can be anything. If you want one right by that, you could use a negative four or a negative six. You could use a zero, because zero is easy. Zero plus five is five. Absolute value of five is five. All right, so I'll show you this one on the calculator also. So the first point has to be on the line here, the x-axis. So I would go left to negative five, zero, and I'm on my x-axis. Then I would plot my zero, five. So starting at zero, go up five. So I got my second point. So math lab at that point would automatically draw you a V-shaped graph. All right, y'all, so let's knock that out on that calculator. Um, and this one's tricky on math on the calculator because you got to know how to get that absolute value. So to get absolute value on your calculator, the easiest way is to hit the second blue button and then the zero. That pulls up the catalog. And the first thing listed in the catalog, ABS, that's your absolute value. So hit enter on that. It pulls up the bars. And now all we do is put in our X plus five. All right, then I can arrow out of that if I wanted to look exactly like my problem. So now we got the absolute value X plus five. We're going to hit graph to see what it looks like. And you can see from the graph, it looks like it's touching over there at that negative five. Now, if you don't work it by hand and you use the calculator, when you go to second graph, you see these Y values are two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. You want to arrow up until you find the Y value that is zero. So I arrowed up. In that negative five for the X's, I got the Y value of zero. So that's your first point you're plotting. And then any of those other points, make that your second one. And y'all, that's what you got to watch out for on Math Lab. It gets a little picky on that one. Make sure you do the Y value zero first and then any other point. Oh, I'm just going to write this one out. So we want to know on this number four, determine if this is a function. So they're giving me a domain and a range. My domain, y'all, is negative five, three, and six. My range has one number, which is a four. And all three of these are pointing to the four. So y'all, this is on y'all, but the question would be, is that a function? Yes. Oh, what I just hear? Yes. Yes. Now, Math Lab has two answers that are yes. So you need to write yes, and it's going to be because 
each element of the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. Okay, because we always focus on our domain on those, okay? Now, they'll have another one that says yes, but it says yes because each element of the range corresponds to exactly one element in the domain. They get it mixed up, but y'all look here. My range is going to three different domains, so it's got to be in this order. The domain has one element in the range for each of them, okay? All right, so this one says find the indicated outputs. For f of x equals 2x squared minus 2x. So the first one they want me to find is f of 0. So f of zero wants me to put a zero in for both of my x's. So that would be two times zero squared. Can you slow down just a little bit if you don't mind? Okay. Yeah, I get to writing a little fast on these study guides. Um, so they're giving me the f of x is two x squared minus two x. And the first one they want me to find was f of zero. And y'all, when they give y'all numbers on these, you got to end up with a single number for your answer. All right, so I'm going to do this sort of following order of operations. Exponent, you got to work first, and it only affects that zero. So I'm going to bring down that two. Zero squared is zero. And then I got minus my two times zero. So now that I've done my exponent, I'm going to multiply left and right. So two times zero is zero. Minus two times zero is zero. And y'all look at that. Zero minus zero gives me a big zero. So... When they give you this f of zero, that's what they want me to do. Put my zeros in for all the x's on my function. Now, y'all, they want us to do f of negative one. So I'm going to pull up my chat, and I'm going to let y'all figure out f of negative one. And then I'll... This is for the same equation, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on this one, they're going to give us three numbers to do. And I think everyone I've seen has been doing F is zero. Now, some of them will change it from F negative one, and then the next one I'm going to do. Um, but yeah. Is the answer also zero for this one? All right, so let's see. We got two times negative one squared minus two times negative one. Oh, I'm wondering, okay, so, so what was the first thing you did to that? Squared it. You need to do the exponent, negative one squared. Uh huh. So bring down that two. And then anything I square will be positive, right? 
So that negative one, negative one makes that a positive one minus two times that negative one. Now we're going to go through and multiply where we can. So you got a two times one up here is going to give you a two. But y'all watch out down here. It becomes positive. It's going to become positive. There you go. And then that gives me what a positive two. Four. Because if you, yeah, uh because -huh, if you multiply two times negative one, you got a negative two. But remember, you're subtracting a negative two, which makes it positive. And I think I heard you say a four. All right, so now y'all try this one now that y'all are getting the hang of this. See what y'all get for f of two. Six. All right, you might be close. Let me so let me figure this out. You got two times two squared minus two times two. So y'all started with my exponent again, right? So what y'all put on that two squared? Four. All right, then minus two times two. I think I'm going to be a little bit different off of that six, because y'all watch this. Two times four is going to give me eight up in the front. Minus my two times two is giving me four back there. Four. So this one looks like it's going to be four just like that one was. There you go. So, so how did you get a six on that? I read a number wrong. Okay, so. I forgot. I Well, I didn't read a number. I've left the two times, or the negative two times two off. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. And then if you just subtract a two instead of that whole thing, yeah, okay. All righty, y'all. Determine if this next one is a function or not. And this is going to be a graph. So we got me an X and Y axis. And this graph just looks like a sideways parabola. So would y'all put yes or no on that being a function? No. Definitely a no. Good job. And y'all, it's no because if you draw vertical lines down through it, it's intersecting it more than once. A function cannot intersect a vertical line more than once. And this does it everywhere I draw a vertical line, right? It's hitting it twice. So good job on that. And so y'all gonna have one of these. Um, a lot of times they do this, but sometimes they might do you a graph that is a function. So make sure you do that vertical line test to it. All right, y'all, let's see. That was what, number six? So let's knock out seven. Seven wants me to find the domain. Now they're giving us g of x equals eight divided by six minus five x. And you know, we're giving you a fraction on this one for sure, because if it wasn't a fraction, the domain was all real numbers. But y'all do have a fraction. So what would y'all do to find my domain? So it sounds like someone is saying, Take the bottom of that fraction and set it equal to something. So remember, zero. it's going to be a zero. Good job. And I'll tell you, in this class, if I take anything and set it equal to a number, it's probably going to be zero 99% of the time. All right, y'all solve that. So what would y'all move? There's no wrong answer. 
I just wonder what y'all would do to that to solve that for that X. Yeah, move the six over. Okay, so I'm gonna do that by subtracting it. So now I'll get negative five X equals my negative six. All right, so y'all got one more move. Divide by negative five. And y'all be careful because all these negatives are making everything positive on us. So that's going to be just a positive six fifths. So in Math Lab, you want to choose the one that says X such that X is a real number. And X cannot equal or six fifths. Now y'all be careful because sometimes they put different symbols here. One of them looks like a greater than or equals. And remember, that's not the stipulation. It's got to be a non-equal symbol there. So make sure you choose the one that's got the non-equals. All right, then we start getting into stuff um, where we was doing the algebra of functions, which was doing the division, adding, supply, uh, multiplying, and subtraction. So this one says, let f of x equal negative 14x plus 2. And g of x is going to equal x squared plus 7. They want us to find f of negative 4 divided by g of negative 4. Now, I'm going to show you this one on the calculator also. Um, but the thing I do to these is I sort of make them look more fractiony by putting my f of negative 4 on top and then my g of negative 4 on the bottom. So, y'all, what do they mean by f of negative 4? Place that in place of the x. There you value. go. Mm -hmm. So doing that gives me negative 14 times negative 4 plus 2. And then same thing with the G, right? But y'all be careful with that G. That's a negative 4 coming in. And anytime you got an X squared and you put a negative number, you got to put the negative number in parentheses and then add the 7 at the end. I'll tell you the biggest mistakes I get, people just punch negative four squared plus seven. Y'all, that will give you the wrong answer. The calculator's got to know that you're putting that whole negative four in for that X, okay? Ooh, let's see what we get up here. So negative times negative is going to make this a positive something. So let's see, 14 times four. Oh, I think that's what, 56 plus my two. You know, it takes me a little longer multiplying 14s because I come from Arkansas when I grew up and they stopped at 12 times 12, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we never got to do the 14s and the 13s and all that. <laughs> all right, on the bottom, negative four squared, that better become a positive something. Which would be a positive <laughs> 16 and then add your seven. All right, y'all, now, so now all I've got to do is add the top, add the bottom, and be done. But I want to check if it simplifies when I get there. So 56 and 2 gave me 58. 16 and 7 gave me 23. So I know 58 won't divide by that 23. And 23 is what we call a prime number. So that should be my final answer. But y'all, I'm going to show you how I would put this part right here into the calculator. So let me click on that calculator screen. All right, so I'm going to 
through what's already on here. And then quit this second mode to quit that screen. All right. I would probably put it in there just like a fraction, like it looks. So I would hit alpha y equals to get that fraction option and hit enter. So that's what that number one, nd means numerator over denominator. If you had a mixed number, you would use that number two and so on. So there's my, so now I don't have to use extra parentheses. I can make the top look like a negative 14. So negative 14. I'm going to use parentheses and put in that negative four. Close the parentheses and add two. And what's nice when you use the alpha y equals to make this fraction, it'll give your answers in fractions instead of decimals. All right, then on the bottom, we had negative four squared, but remember, I got to put that negative four in parentheses. So my negative four is in the parentheses, then I square it. And then I had to add, oh, what was that, seven? So I had a plus seven at the end. So if we were right, we should get a 58 over 23 when we hit enter. And y'all, there you go, 58 over 23. So use the fraction option in the calculator. It eliminates a lot of using extra parentheses, okay? Yeah, if you put it in straight wise, you would have to use extra parentheses around that numerator and denominator if you use the divide symbol instead of making it a fraction, okay? All righty, so this one is doing another operation. It says let f of x equal negative three x plus five. Let g of x equal x squared minus two. They want me to find the difference, which would be g minus f of x. So y'all, here's the thing on this one. They're not giving me a number to plug in like they did up here. They're just giving me an x, which means I cannot use the calculator on this one at all. Because your calculator is going to have a stored value for the x, and it'll give you a number answer, but we cannot do that on this one because they didn't give me the number to put in for the x. So you need to come down and do the G minus F of X. I always start out by putting these functions in parentheses. So this will be my G minus my F. So G of X will go first. And then we'll put F of X in the second one. So watch for signs on this. G of X was X squared minus two f of x was a negative 3x plus 5. All right, y'all, so here's the thing. We got to drop these parentheses first. So I want y'all, one of y'all tell me, what would y'all put after we drop these parentheses? Uh, x squared minus 2 plus 3x plus 5. Oh, you are really close. I like the plus 3x. Minus. Oh, minus 5. There you go. So distribute it all the way through and make me a not minus 5. Good job. And then your final step, add like terms. So the x squared comes down. The plus 3x comes down. But y'all, you got to add them two numbers together. So the negative two and the negative five give us a negative seven. So on this one, the biggest thing you got to watch out for is this order here. The G minus the F on that, okay? 
And y'all guess what? Number 10, they're going to do the same thing, but they're going to give me a number for it. So I'm going to give y'all a second on that, and then we'll do number 10. I have a question. Okay. Is the review 20 questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. And it's the same order and the same type questions as my test. So, okay. so the biggest thing y'all can do is do that review until you get a good grade on it, because you can do the review as many times as you want, but you only get one chance on the test. So make sure you get a passing grade before you do the test would be the key to that, okay? All right, y'all, so let me fix my paper. It starts flipping up on me. All right, so like I said, number 10 is similar to nine, but we're going to get a number on this one. They're going to let f of x equal x squared minus one. G of x is going to equal 12 minus x. On this one, they want me to find f minus g of a negative five. So you would come down f minus g of negative five is going to equal my f of negative five minus my g of negative five. So I'm going to put my f of negative five first and then my g of negative five in the second one. And y'all, that's just like y'all told me a while ago, put these numbers in for these X's. Be careful on the first one. That's a negative number. So I'm going to square that negative five in parentheses and then subtract one. Over here, I'm going to do 12 minus negative five. And really, I'm just using these parentheses around this negative five because I got two negatives happening in a row, okay? Now, on the calculator, I'll put it just like I got it right here. Parentheses, and then put in your negative five in its own parentheses, square that, minus one, and then minus the second parentheses. Now, you don't have to use the negative five's parentheses on the second one, because it don't have an exponent. Um, I just do that to sort of separate my negatives. All right, y'all, so I'm going to work the first parentheses and the second one. In the first one, you square negative 5. That's going to give you a positive 25. Bring down to minus 1. I think the only thing I'm going to do the second one, you got two negatives there. We're going to make that a positive so that that becomes 12 plus 5. All right, I got one thing I can do in each of these. All right, let me let one in real quick. In the first one, 25 minus 1 gives me 24. I don't need parentheses anymore because I only have one number now. Minus the 12 plus 5 is 17. Now that all my parentheses are done, I can finally do the subtraction. So let's see, what's that? 24 minus 17 should give me positive 7. All right, but like I said, on the calculator, I'd probably put it in just like I had right here. All right, y'all, 11 is probably, it's got three parts and it's dealing with the domain. So they want me to find the domain of the sum difference and product. Now my function is f of x is going to equal one divided by x minus eight. g of x is going to equal nine x to the third. So I'll do the domain for the sum, then I'll do it for the difference, and then the product. 
So the sum is adding them. So that would be F plus G of X. That's going to equal my F, which is one divided by X minus eight, plus my G, which is nine X to the third. So y'all, here's my question. Will we have any numbers that we have to exclude from our domain? I think so. Would it be um, eight? It's going to be eight because of that fraction. Good job. And remember, on a domain at this point, all we're worried about are the fractions. So she got that eight by saying, well, X minus eight can equal zero. So just add that eight. Really like we did on that first, well, what was it? Like the fourth or fifth problem earlier? Um, but if you set the bottom equal to zero, you get an eight. So on this one, you'll have, this is already gonna be written. X, X is a real number. But then they put and, and then they put a box. Now, you got to write this whole part out. Since X cannot equal eight, you got to write the X to not equal and the eight. Y'all, you got to put everything in it because all they do is they put the end and then leave you a space there, okay? So what was next? Subtraction. That would be F minus G of X is going to equal one over x minus eight minus nine x to the third. So y'all, what would you put for that domain? And remember, they're gonna give you this part. Is it all real numbers? So the question, if I subtract these, do we not have any areas that we're concerned about? Because y'all, you still got this fraction sitting here, right? X is a real number and cannot equal eight. There you go. X cannot equal eight again. And if you remember when y'all did the homework on this problem, the sum difference in product, they really are going to all have the same domain. So watch this. F times G of X will equal my F, which is one over X minus eight times my nine X to the third. So my domain would be X is a real number and cannot equal eight. X cannot equal eight. There you go. Can you give me a second to write this down before you move on? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I am. Yeah. So all three of these on number 11 will always have the same domain. So if you figure out that first one, you just copy it down to them other two, okay? Now, the one that would be different would be division but they're not hitting us with division on this and so we're happy. But guess what? Number 12 will be division. I Mm -hmm. So we're starting to get down this thing. So what was on 12, I said? All right, so 12, they're going to give us division. So they want us to determine the domain. Of S divided by G. F of X is going to equal 7X minus 6. G of X is going to equal 6X minus 30. 
So if we're doing S divided by G, once again, I'm going to set it up to look like a fraction. F is on top, 7X minus 6. G is on the bottom, 6X minus 30. Now, y'all, let me see. Uh, so they're still doing the same type answers with the X is real number type stuff. So will you think there's going to be any values on this one that I got to kick out of my domain? Yes. Five. Oh, I think you done told me the right answer. You said a what? A five. A five. Because all we're concerned about, good job, was the bottom of that, y'all. So take the bottom, set it equal to zero, and you'll see when you add 30 to both sides, you get 6x equals 30, and then divide by that 6. Good job. <laughs> and that gives me my x equals 5. Um, but some of these you can figure out. Hey, I got a 30 here. What could make that 6 a 30? And that would be a 5, right? <laughs> All right, so once again, remember, they're going to have this part, X, such as X is a real number. And blank. Remember, you got to put it all in there. X cannot equal five, okay? Now, here's the thing. Say you do this test and you look at it, and you accidentally put not equals five in that. When you look at the test results, if you'll email me and you got a not equals five instead of the X not equals five, I will give you credit for that, okay? I'm not quite as picky as math lab. Oh, y'all, look here. We got composition coming up. So this one, F of X is going to equal 5x plus 4. G of x is going to equal x to the third. They want me to find f composed g of a negative 3. So this was that composition of functions we did. And I always rewrote this so that you could see what they really wanted. So when you see F composed G of negative three, that's really a F of G of negative three. So work it like inner, innermost parentheses out, sort of like um, order of operations on this. The negative three first will go into the G. So the first thing you got to find is G of a negative three. So y'all, they're going to put that negative three into the G. So that's going to give me a negative three to the third power. All right, y'all, so let's see. Negative three times negative three is nine. Nine times negative three gives us a negative 27. So what would y'all do with that negative 27 now? Plug it in. Um, plug it in the X for the F of X, my bad. There you go. So you're going to find me F of negative 27. All right, so that'll be 5 times negative 27 plus my 4. Woo, y'all, that's a negative something. Let's think. So that's what, uh, I think I'm getting negative 135 on that. Plus my 4. I got 131, negative 131. Oh, the final answer, yeah, because my negative 135 and my positive 4, give me oh, my 131. Good job. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to multiply that in my head, that 5 and 27. All right, so the next question, is this one-to-one? -one? Is this one two? One. Now, this will be a picture of a graph again. My X and my Y 
So this one sort of comes up and curves up. And on this side of the Y, it sort of comes downhill curving. And y'all right in the middle, it's got an upside down U shape. So my question, is that one to one? Yes. All right, so let me tell you how I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna check it by running me a horizontal line across this. So you see these horizontal lines? Remember, if it's one-to-one, -one, it can only intersect my horizontal line one time. But y'all look, it's hitting it here and here. So it's failing the horizontal line test, which means this would be a no. So vertical line can only hit it once if it's a function. Horizontal line can only hit it once if it's one to one. All right, we only got six, but I got some big boys left, okay? <laughs> we got all them systems to do, so let's see. The next three are probably the tricky ones on here. 15 says, determine if one to one. Is this another graph? No. We actually gonna do some, <coughs> we're gonna do some work on this one. Cause this one says, determine if one to one, if it's one to one, find the formula for the inverse. So y'all, they're giving me f of x equals three over x plus six. Now y'all's problem will be exactly like this, except that three and six will probably be different numbers. But let me tell you this on this one. You better put yes, it's one to one. everybody's number 15 will be yes, one-to-one. -one. So you will have to find me an inverse. But if you wanted to graph it, when you graph this in the calculator, I would make it look just like a fraction. So let's go do that on the calculator. All right, so I'm gonna clear off the old history here. So um, to graph it, I'm gonna go to Y equals. I'm going to clear that out. Now, remember, to make a fraction, I hit alpha, y equals, and enter for nd. So on top, I had a 3. And then I'm going to arrow down. On bottom, I had an x plus 6. Now, I'm going to graph that just to see if it looks. So see this one, if you did the horizontal line test, it would only intersect all my points once. I know it looks like it's getting flat there, but it is still going downhill. It just starts getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. But y'all, everybody's 15 will be one to one, okay? So if you mark not one to one on 15, it's going to mark you wrong, okay? All right, so the question is, do y'all remember how to find an inverse? So let me give you a clue. I'm going to replace that f of x with something. All right, so let me get y'all going. First thing you do, replace the f of x with a y. So this becomes y equals three over x plus six. So what did I do next? So let me give you a clue. I switched something.
Do you switch the Y and the X and the Y? Yeah, I'm switching the X and the Y. So this becomes X equals three over Y plus six. So now all we're doing is solving it for the Y, but we need the Y. The Y can't be in the bottom of the fraction when I solve for it. I got to move the Y up. And the way I move the Y up is I multiply both sides by the Y plus six. And y'all look at that, the right side, the Y plus six is canceled. So I'm gonna have my Y plus six times X equal to my three that was left. Now, you could distribute the X and multiply by everything inside, but the easiest thing to do on this problem is just divide both sides by the X. That way you leave the Y plus six over here by itself. So watch, we're gonna come down and do Y plus six times X. We're gonna divide that by X, which means the three, we're gonna divide by the X. And if you notice, <laughs> Well, excuse me. If you notice here, the X is canceled. All that's left is the Y plus six. And then over here, you still got the three over X. So y'all, let me show you all I did to that. In the long run, all I did, I took this X and switched it with the Y plus six. Doing all this math, that's all I did. I put the Y plus six here and the X on the bottom. So then we only got one more move and that's to get that Y by itself. So we would come in and subtract six from both sides. And now I've got my Y by itself. So I got a three over X minus a six. Can't do nothing with that. So I'm gonna make that a three over X minus my six. Now for this, problem math lab already has the I remember that say again I didn't get that question it wasn't a question I remember <laughs> yeah. um, how I figured that out uh -huh. so now they got them all, all you do is put in the 3 over x minus 6 okay yeah, because they already give you, that's called the inverse notation for that function. <clears throat> and they're already going to give you that. All right, y'all. So my next two are going to be the big boys. And uh, I'll remind you how to do them on that calculator too for 16 and 17. So let me hit 16 first. 16 says solve the following system. I got 5x plus 4y equals 52. I got 4x plus 5y equals 56. So I got a system of equations. So here's my thing. I'll show you how to do it on the calculator. But... Is anyone solving these by hand or are, or are y'all using the calculator? I'm going to be honest. I use the calculator. calculator. <laughs> oh, is anyone solving them by hand? I'm trying. I still haven't yeah. figured out the calculator. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do them both ways. I'm just sort of interested to see how y'all are doing them. So here's my first question. I got to eliminate either the X's or the Y's. So y'all tell me one to eliminate and we're going to eliminate it. Uh, the X's maybe. All right. So I'm going to do the X's. Actually, they'd both be about the same, wouldn't they? Because <laughs> um, I got fours and fives on both of those. So we're going to eliminate the X. What's the smallest number I can turn a five and a four into? Oh, what y'all just say? 20. 20. Also remember this, we got to make one positive, one negative. So I'm going to take my first row and multiply by a positive four to make that a positive 20. This bottom row, 
I'm going to multiply by a negative 5 so that this one gives me a negative 20. So multiply everybody in the first one by 4. You're going to get 20x plus 16y equals 208. Everybody in the second row gets multiplied by negative 5. So I get a negative 20x minus 25y equals, let's see, what's that? Two, 250, 280 maybe. All right, but y'all were happy because look at this. The 20s cancel. So I got negative 25 and 16, which gives me a negative 9y. Negative 280 and a positive 208 give me a negative 72. And y'all, now I can solve that for the y and have my first variable. So take both sides, divide by negative 9. And y'all look at that, all these negatives make everything positive. And let's see, what's that? 72 divided by nine, that's a, gives me an eight. So now we know that the Y is eight. I'm gonna come up in this first equation and solve it for the X by back substituting. So the back substitute, I got five times X plus four times Y, which was eight, is going to equal 52. Now you can pick either equation. You can either use either one of these two equations. It don't matter which one you use, okay? All right, y'all, so let's see. Four times eight gives me 32. That's still going to equal 52. So now, to make this problem quickest, you would probably subtract 32, then do your dividing. So let's subtract by 32. Oh, it's going to start looking better. I got 5x, 52 minus 32 gives me 20. And on this one, you should get two nice numbers, no decimals or no fractions. All right, so divide both in by five. And I get X equals a positive four. Now in math lab on this question, you gotta remember to put those in ordered pair parentheses. The first one would be your X, which was four, and then your Y, which was eight. But y'all, if you don't put it in parentheses, it'll get you on that one. So, must use parentheses on number 16. All right, let me think. Parentheses. Parentheses. Well, I don't do English, so I might be spelling that wrong, but that's all right. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Parentheses. All right, let's do this one I just did on the calculator. So, I'm going to pull up my calculator for you. And I'm going to clear it off the old screen here and go back to my main screen on my calculator. All right. First thing you got to do is put this matrix in your calculator. So you're going to hit stack it, which is the blue button, and then come down about three buttons and hit that X negative one button that says matrix above it. You're going to arrow over to edit. And then I just hit enter since one's highlighted. So the first thing it's asking me is something times something. Remember, that is how many rows you have by how many columns you have. You're always going to have one more column than you do rows. So this one, I had two variables, so I had two rows. So I would do two enter. I had three columns. So I would hit three, enter. At that point, it makes six spaces. All I'm going to do is put in the numbers. I had five X, so I would hit a five, enter. 
And we got to hit enter after every number. Four Y, so that would be four enter. And then it equaled 52, so I'm going to do 52 and enter. Second row had four X's, so that would be four enter. Five Y would be five enter. And then 56 and enter. So make sure you enter after that last number and it puts it up on your screen. So y'all have all my numbers in. Now I'm going to quit the screen by hitting second mode. So now the calculator has my two by three matrix in it. So now I want it to do some math for me. So I'm going to hit second, X negative one for the matrix. I'm going to arrow right and highlight math. Do y'all remember what I'm going to arrow down and find? REF, I think. Oh. Is R R E F. Uh huh. So you got to have the R R E F. Good job. So you want the one with the two R's. So once you highlight that and hit enter, it's going to bring the R R E F on your screen. Now I'm going to go back and get the matrix we just put in the calculator by hitting second, X negative one. So my one is highlighted, my two by three matrix. So I'm going to hit enter. So y'all, you got to use second X negative one three times on this problem, but it's a lot easier than doing the math because when I hit enter on the right side, the top number four is the X value. The 800 is the Y value. So either way, you're going to get me a 4-8 on that problem, okay? Yeah, I, I like to do the calculator when those things get pretty big. Um, smaller ones sometimes can go quick. But this one, we had to change both rows just to get rid of some letters. All right, 17 solves. 9x minus y plus z equals negative 23. 2x plus 2y minus 3z is going to equal 9. And then finally, x minus 3y plus 2z equals negative 14. So I'm going to label this. Equation one, equation two, and equation three. So first of all, I need to pick out a variable to eliminate. And y'all, I can do any three of these you want. X's, Y's, or Z's. Z. You say Z? Yes. All right, so I'm going to eliminate the Z's. So first of all, I'm going to use the first two equations and eliminate that Z. This one's a negative three. So what would I need to multiply the whole first row by? Positive three. All right, so I'm going to change one and then I'm going to add the two. So we're going to multiply this whole row by positive three. So that's going to give me 27X negative 3y, positive 3z, and then let's see, negative 23 times 3 gives me what, a negative 69. Now, the second row I didn't change, so I'm going to bring down my 2x plus 2y minus 3z equals 9. When I add them two together, we're going to call that equation four. All right, y'all, so let's see what that's giving me. 27 and two give me 29 X's. Negative three and two give me negative one Y. The Z's cancel. Negative 69 and nine give us a negative 60. So we got part of our next system. 
But what we got to do now is use this bottom row and eliminate the Z again. So y'all, the bottom row is a 2Z. I think I'm going to add the bottom row to the top row to get rid of the Zs. If I add the bottom row to the top row, what do I need to multiply the top row by? Negative two. There you go. So I'm going to change one this time and add it to row three. So let's do the negative two. That's going to give me negative 18 X plus two Y minus two Z and then negative two times negative 23 gives us a positive 46. Now let's bring row three in, which was X minus three Y plus two Z equals negative 14. Y'all, when we're done with that, that will be our equation five. All right, so there we go. That's gonna give me negative 17 X. Two and negative three give me negative y. The z's cancel. Oh, and y'all, what's that going to give me? 46 minus 14. That's going to be what? Uh, 32. All right, so let's put them two together. 29x minus y equals negative 60. And then that was negative 17x minus y equals 32. All right, I got a two by three system. So what do you want to eliminate the x's or the y's? Y. Well, I was praying you didn't say the x's, okay? <laughs> I don't even know what the smallest number 29 and 17 would go into. All right. So here's a question. We got to make one of these positive and one of these negative. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change. Well, we can change either four or five. Which one y'all want to change? Five. All right, so I'm going to change five, then add to four. So if we change five, whoops, by multiplying everybody in five by a negative one. Now four is going to stay the same. So four is going to be 29X minus Y equals negative 60. And y'all, if you multiply this whole row by negative one, all that's doing is changing all the signs. So it becomes a positive 17X plus a Y equals a negative 32. But y'all look what you did. You got the Y's to cancel. So here's a question. What does 29 and 17 equal? That's going to be... Uh, 46. Okay, so that's going to be 46 X's. This is going to give me negative 92. So y'all, now we can solve for the X by dividing everybody by 46. And I get X is a negative two. So now the fun part, we get two back substitute. So I got to use either four or five. So let me see. Uh, Oh, hell, they're about the same. So I'm just going to substitute it into four. I got 29 times my X, which was negative two, minus a Y has to equal negative 60. All right, so that's going to give you negative 58 minus Y equals negative 60. I'm going to add 58. I now have negative y equals negative two, but y'all remember the y has to be positive. So divide both in by that negative one. 
So that's going to cancel giving me a Y equals a positive two. So I now know what the X is. I know what the Y is. So y'all, let me pull this up a second. And I'm going to back substitute for the third time. I'm going to take my X is negative two, Y is two, and put it into one of these three original equations up here. So let's see. Hmm. I'll just use the first one again. I got nine times X, which is negative two, minus my Y, which is a positive two, plus my Z is going to equal a negative 23. So now we can get this one solved for the Z. So I would multiply first and get a negative 18 minus two plus Z equals negative 23. Y'all, left side, we got like terms. So negative 18 and negative 2 give me a negative 20. Plus my Z equals negative 23. Well, we are finally down to our last step, which is to add 20 to both sides. So I end up with Z equals a negative, what's that, a negative uh, 3. Now, in math lab, math lab has the solution is they already have the parentheses on this one. All you got to do is put in the three numbers. So remember, on 16, you had to put the parentheses because they don't give them to you. But this one, they do give you the parentheses and the boxes. So just come in and put your negative two for the X, your positive two for the Y, and then your negative three for the Z. Now, if you do this one in the calculator, make that a three rows by four columns put in your numbers just like we did on that one and then go back and get your ref i do it there, and i got a whole bunch of decimals oh so i'm gonna to to pull my calculator up for us so let's go to my calculator it won't take us but a second y'all all right, so I'm going to clear my screen, and I'm going to clear this one over here. All right, so let's go to second, X negative one. Go to edit, and hit enter. All right, this one's a three, enter, by four, enter. Whoops, let me get back up there. That's a four. I must have hit enter twice on that. All right, so I got my three by four. So we had a nine enter, negative one enter. I got a one enter for the Z, and then a negative 23. And enter. Next row, I got a two for the X, enter. Two for the Y. Enter negative three for the Z. Enter and then a nine for the answer. All right, enter. And it's going to go to the last row. I got a one for the X. Enter negative three for the Y. Two for the Z. And then a negative 14 and enter. So make sure you hit enter on all those numbers. And then it, it sort of jumps back up to the left corner when you got all the numbers entered. So we're going to quit that screen by hitting second mode. All right, now I'm going to hit second X negative one, highlight math and go down and get RREF. And enter. 
Now I'm going to get the matrix by hitting second, X negative one, and enter. All right, so hopefully we get some nice numbers on the right side. So y'all, let me see what we got while go. We got, oh, we got it, negative two, two, and negative three. So I, bet uh, I don't know. I don't know why mine's is going decimals, but it's giving me decimals. But is it giving you negative two point zero zero zero? Uh, no, it's not giving me anything. It's just let me turn my camera on and see if I can show you. Um, you probably couldn't see, but it's like zeros. It's like negative one point nine two. And I know it's not what it's supposed to be, so I don't know what's wrong with my calculator. Okay, so what I want you to do is go to second x negative one again, mm -hmm. arrow over to edit, and hit okay. in. Okay. Name me off, you got a three by four, right? Yes, sir. So name me off your first row of numbers. Nine, negative one, one, negative 23. All right, next two. row. Two, negative two, negative three, nine. Okay, so that's what's getting you. You, what? should, you should have a two, another positive two, then the negative three, then the nine. Oh, so okay. Arrow down, arrow down on that negative two and make that a positive two. <coughs> okay, give me just a second. Yeah, that thing will make oh. it. It'll let you arrow down to them. Okay, I put a two in there, and then negative three. And then a nine, and then your last row. Uh, one, negative three, two, and then four, negative 14. Okay, so your only mistake was that two should have been positive. So quit that screen by hitting second mode. Yes, sir. Now hit second, X negative one. Mm-hmm. Arrow over to math again. Mm-hmm. Go down and get your RREF. Okay. Okay, I got it. And then, okay, so you got what you needed now? Yes. Okay. So if you ever get decimals on that, go back into edit and look at your numbers again. Because usually y'all okay. miss it by one sign on that thing. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Mine said Eris, S Y N T A X. Syntax error. So did yes. you use the negative key or the subtraction key? Oh, never mind. <laughs> so if you get syntax, that means you use the wrong symbol, okay? <laughs> hey, but y'all are learning, right? That's what matters. All right, y'all. So let's see. 18 is the inequality stuff. So they want me to graph the inequality. And really, the, the rest of these or doing inequalities. Whoops, let me move that back up. So it wants us to graph the inequality. I get 5x minus 3y is less than or equal to negative 9. So y'all, on this one, you want to solve it for the y, whether you do it by hand or calculator. So you're going to have to move the 5x to the other side by subtracting. So this is really like the first one. The very first problem you did, you had to solve for y, you do this one also. So that gives you negative 3y, less than or equal. Once again, you can't add the number to x's. So just make that a negative 9 minus 5x or negative 5x minus 9 either way. So y'all, what would y'all do next to this problem? Get y by itself, divide by negative three on both sides. Okay. Anything else? Oh, yeah, we just did this stuff Monday, didn't we? So remember, if you divide by negative, you got to do one more thing to that. Flip the sign. Flip the sign. There you go. So make sure you flip it because it makes a difference on that shading, okay? But good job because now I got Y greater than or equal to, and all these negatives are making everything positive. So nine divided by three will give me a three plus my five thirds X. 
So at that point, I would just throw that into my calculator and get my two points and use MATLAB. So here's a question. Now I'm gonna find me a little table to do mine on. No, so let me see. I'm gonna go out about probably about 10 on this. All right, so my X is I always use zero no matter what. And then my second one will be a three because of that fraction. So watch this. If I put a zero in there, five thirds times zero is zero. Zero plus three will give me three. So anytime you use a zero on this kind of problem, the answer is always going to be whatever that number is. Now, if I put a three in, look what I got. Because the reason I use threes because I can cancel those fractions out. And this now becomes three plus five, which will give me an eight. So I got a point at zero, three right here. And then over here at three up eight. So y'all, remember, I got two choices for this line. It can either be a solid line or it's going to be dotted or dashed. Would y'all use a solid line on that or a dash? Solid. Solid because of the equals. Good job. Anytime you got that equals under there, that's telling you that it will be a solid line. Now, the second question I would ask you, would you shade that above or below? Above. There you go. Because remember, you're always looking at your last equation and greater than does shade above. Good job. All right, y'all, 19, I'm going to get my graph ready again. And let me see. I'll probably go out five on this one. Um, but y'all, make sure. Now, by default, it'll make a solid line. It's the ones like this. It says graph X is less than three. So many people miss this because of the line. That's less than, so this will be a dotted line. In this sense, it's just an X. Anytime you got an X without a Y, when you graph this, y'all, it has to be a vertical line, okay? Not a horizontal line. It's got to be up and down vertical. So what you do to this, you go over here to three on the X axis, and mark your first point. Then you either go up one or down one and mark your second point. Because this means when you got X is less than three, that means every point on this line has to have an X value of three. Now, what kind of line do I want? A uh, dotted. Dotted line, there you go. So many people miss that because by default, they just draw the line. And by default, it's on the solid line, okay? And then if you made a table on this, every X has to be three. And you can pick any Y values you want. So my second question, shade it to the left or to the right? To the left. To the left. Remember, Xs are... Less than going left, greater than going right. All right, y'all. So y'all remember a little bit, and that was just Monday we did that. So I'm going to let y'all have a second, and then we'll knock out the last one, which is going to be a system. Remember, the system, the answer was where they overlap. All right, y'all, so we're going to graph the system. And this is number 20.
So my first one is y greater than or equal to x plus four. My second one is y less than or equal four minus x. So once again, we're going to graph this. Now, you don't have to worry about the line in math lab because on this one, you got the equals. And by default, in math lab, it's a solid line. Um, but math lab ain't going to make you graph it. They just want you to pick out the picture on that one. We're going to pick out one of these four pictures that represents our double shaded area. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to graph the first one with an X and a Y and then the second one. And I'm going to use zeros and ones for both of these lines. Okay. Because that's easy numbers. Zero plus four gives me four. One plus four gives me five. So y'all let me make some marks on here. All right, so zero four would go up four. One five would go right one up five. We said it's going to be a solid line because of the equals. But my first line is greater than, so would I say that above or below? Above. All right, so we got our first line shaded above like that. So now the second one, I'm going to put a zero in for the X. Four minus zero is four. I'm going to put a one in for the X. Four minus one gives me three. So let's see, that one's at zero, four, that same point there. And then right one, up three. It's going to be a solid line also. But would the second line shade above or below? Below. There you go, because that one's less than. So we're shading below the line. So y'all, if you look, if I was to draw a picture of that, you can tell that my graph is only shading on this one little section on the left. Right here's where all my double shading's happening. So when you go to the math lab, the one we want would be A, B, C, or D. C. C, there you go. The C has that shaded on the left. All right, one must have got knocked off. Let me let them back in real quick. Now watch this, y'all. I'm going to show you this one last problem on the calculator to show you that shading. All right, so we'll go to y equals, and I'm going to clear this out. So my first equation was x plus 4. So I'm going to hit x plus, whoops, too many pluses. So let me delete one of those and make that a 4. Now remember, I can arrow all the way left where the blue box is. Now the older calculators, when you get all the way left, just hit enter till you got the triangle that's a bigger on top. On the newer ones, you get on that and hit enter and go down to where it says line and arrow right one and you got the triangle that's bigger on the top. Come down and say, okay. So it'll now shade the first line above. I'm going to go down here and put in my second one, which was 4 minus x. So I'm going to do 4 minus x. And I'm going to arrow all the way left again. Like I said, the older calculators just hit enter till you got the triangle that looks like it's bigger on the bottom. So mine's going to be green, but I need to go down here where it says line and arrow right. So I got the triangle that's bigger on the bottom and hit OK. So remember, I got, looks like blue and green, but I'm looking for the double shaded area when I hit graphs. And y'all, there it is on that left side again, okay? Now y'all, on the newer calculators, when you go back to Y equals and clear this, Notice it's still showing the triangles. So just come back up here on the newer calculators and hit enter. 
and make that line back into the line tool we were using. So let's see. Whoops, wrong way. So make it the thick line again and then hit enter. And then come down to the Y2. And we'll change that one back to a line also. And hit OK. So a lot of times you got to physically switch it back to the lines. Um, sometimes I think if you exit out of the Y equals by quitting, when you go back, sometimes they should by default go back to the line. But if it don't, just click on it and change it back. All right, y'all, listen, that is the 20 questions you're going to see on my test. So like I said, the best thing to do is do that review for test one. It counts as a quiz grade anyway. Do it till you get comfortable. Once you get comfortable on that, knock that test out, okay? Now, if you do the test and you review it and you see questions that you got right, but you put them in wrong. You forgot parentheses. You forgot to put the X. If you find mistakes like that, let me know and I can fix those up, okay? Can I see 18 again if you don't mind? All right, I kept you all for a while tonight, I guess. So, Ashley, I can't hear you. Can I see 18 again if you don't mind? 18, let me see. I think that was on this one right here. So, let me pull that screen back up real quick. All right, so y'all should be seeing my 18 on top there. Now, remember, on number one and number 18, that was the trick with solving this for the Y. So move your X's and then divide by whatever's in front of that Y on these kind of problems, okay? That way you can get the Y by itself. Use the calculator if you want to. All right, y'all, something else I'll do, remember, 7, 1, and 7, 2. Don't worry about them this week. I'm going to move them to the next week, okay? All I want y'all focusing on this weekend is your test. So, so I've got a question. So, yes, you can only take the test once. Now. There's a test review right next to it. It says review for test one. That counts as a quiz grade, but it is also like a practice test. It looks exactly like this one I just did and exactly like your test, but it counts as a quiz grade. And since they're the same, I would recommend getting a good grade on the practice, um, on the review, before I did my test. Y'all can do that review quiz for test one as many times as you want. But the test, you only get one shot, okay? So that helps, Stacey? Okay. All right, y'all. So let me go put my recording real quick so that I can get this sent out later.